Hi guys, I welcome you all to Chakrishan Academy. In today's session, we are going to discuss very very important questions from your NEET and CET exam. Remember, in this preparation, I am going to also demonstrate how your NCRT book is going to be a key factor in cracking these exams. And also, stay tuned till the end because you are going to gain a lot from this topic. So let's see the first question. So one turn of helix in a beta form DNA is approximately so one turn of the helix it means it's asking about a pitch of the dna and we know in one turn in one turn or you can say pitch of the dna there are 10 base pairs first of all you need to remember this so one turn has 10 base pairs and remember the distance of the one complete turn or the length of one turn is basically 3 point nanometer or we can also write it as 34 angstrom so that is why b is going second option is going to be the correct answer now let's have some more details here so they are clearly mentioning that the pitch would be 34 angstrom or 3.4 nanometers the rise per base pair would be 3.4 angstrom this forms dna with the above mentioned features is called b dna clearly stated in the ncert so let's see the next question now in the next question, they are saying the substrate has to go through a much higher energy state or a transition state in case of first exothermic reactions only, not true, endothermic only, both exo and endo or neither exo or endo. The actual answer is the third option because it has to be both exothermic and endothermic in the transition state. Let me show you the more details. So you can clearly see it says whether it is an exothermic or an endothermic or energy requiring reaction okay the substrate the s here is the substrate has to go through a much higher energy state or a transition state clearly stated in the ncrt so you can see how the ncrt is going to be super important for your neat and cet exam preparation so now let's see the next question so in the next question it says cellulose does not form blue color with iodine why it is so so does it break down when iodine reacts with it not true this cannot be the answer it is a disaccharide we know cellulose is a polysaccharide so it is also not true and plus it is not relevant second it is a helical molecule yes it is but that's not the only reason and yes cellulose is not helical starch is helical so this is also not true so answer it is does not contain complex helices and hence cannot hold iodine this is the correct answer let me show you the details here so in the ncrt book they have clearly mentioned starch can hold iodine molecules because it has in helical portion and the starch the iodine is blue in color because of that but cellulose does not contain a helices and it cannot hold iodine and that is why there will be no blue color now let's see the next question so in the next question it says malonate inhibits the growth of pathogenic bacteria by inhibiting the activity of so let me tell you this question has came from enzymes from the competitive enzymes so the options are dinitrogenase succinic dehydrogenase amylase or lipase definitely second option is correct but let me tell you the details on this here so here are the details first of all understand what is competitive inhibition so in competitive inhibition what happens when the inhibitor closely resembles the substrate in molecular structure and it inhibits the activity of the enzyme okay that is called competitive inhibition now the example is here for the competitive inhibition is inhibition of succinic dehydrogenase by malonate which is closely resembling the substrate succinate in the structure and that is how it inhibits and such competitive inhibition are used in the controlling the pathogens bacteria so that is why the option number two succinic dehydrogenase is a correct answer now let's see the next question so in the next question they are asking which of the following is not a secondary metabolite remember in the ncrt not just the paragraphs the lines as i'll tell you tables as well as the diagrams are equally important very very important let me show you how first of all understand what is a secondary metabolite so like how our excretory waste are nitrogenous waste in plant those waste are called secondary metabolite so I'll tell you the answer is lecithin because lecithin is a phospholipid which is found in plasma membrane. But let me show you the details in the NCRT book. 
So here are the details. If you see, you'll find this table in the chapter biomolecules. You will see first of all, anthocyanins, carotenoids, they all are pigment type of secondary metabolites. They have all given the examples of secondary metabolites. For alkaloids, you'll find morphine. You know, morphine is used for a painkiller. It's an analgesic, very strong analgesic. Codeine is also there. Terp in terpenoids, you have monoterpenes and diterpenes. In oils, you have lemongrass oil. In toxin, it's abrin and rixin. In lecithin, the examples are concannabinoid A. And uh, it's not lecithin, my bad. It's lectins. Lectins and lecithin are two different words. Lecithin is a phospholipid and that is why it is not one of the secondary metabolites. Then in drugs, you have venblastin or curcumin which is also one of the options then in polymeric substances you have rubber gum and cellulose so these are the examples are very very important you have to remember and it can be there in your exam so let's see the next question so in the next question they are asking which of the following bond is formed as a result of reaction of carboxyl group of one amino acid with amino group of another we know how peptide bonds are formed by the dehydration okay where the amino group loses the H and carboxyl group loses the OH and then we have a CONH linkage so that is why answer has to be a peptide bond but let me tell you the details so details are here you can see in polypeptide amino acids are linked to by a peptide bond they are clearly mentioning it which are formed by when carboxylic group of one amino acid reacts with amino group of the next amino acid and they lose water, it's an elimination, dehydration reaction. Same thing we observe in the case of polysaccharides or disaccharides where two monosaccharides, they are joined by a glycosidic bond, okay, by losing water. And this, also, this bond is also formed by dehydration, like I said, by losing water. And in nucleic acid, you will see the phosphate, one phosphate, uh, entity one phosphate group is joined by two two you know nitrogenous bases two two sugars not the base two two sugar how it is two sugars each phosphate group is bound to two sh sugar okay one sugar it binds at the third position third carbon and another sugar is bounded at fifth carbon that is what it is mentioned here in nucleic acid a phosphate links with phosphate groups linking the third carbon of one sugar okay of one nucleotide to the fifth carbon of sugar of the succeeding nucleotide the bond between phosphate and hydroxyl group is called ester bond and because each phosphate group has linked with two to sugar okay two to ester bonds are there on either side that's why it's called phosphodiester bond and nitrogenous bases have a hydrogen bond you need to remember these bonds where they are present and the names so now let's see the next question so in the next question you can see primary proteins are also known as polypeptides because are they linear in change no they are polymers of peptide monomers or are they successive amino acids are jointly bond uh, you know by the peptide bonds which is the correct answer fourth option is they can assume many conformations no that is also not true third answer is correct let me show you the details so in the details you can see the positional information in a protein which the first amino acid which is second and so on if you are able to see they are your primary structure <coughs> of a protein a protein is imagined as a line the left end represented by a first amino acid <coughs> and the right end represents the last amino acid okay so when the amino acids are joined by each other by peptide bonds in a chain that's how it forms a polypeptide and polypeptide rises to proteins so that is why the third option successive amino acids are jointly bind by peptide bonds are is a correct option now let's move to the next question in the next question they are asking following are the statements about the reference to lipids identify how many are correct so first of all lipids have only single bonds are called unsaturated first of all single bond whenever is there is called saturated not unsaturated second thing is lipids do have both saturated and unsaturated single bond and double or triple bonds so that is why this can't be true lecithin is a phospholipid it's actually a correct option okay trihydroxypropane is a glycerol that also is correct okay glycerol structure is a trihydric alcohol okay so trihydroxypropane is the right answer then palmit, uh, palmitic acid has 20 carbon including carboxyl carbon it's not true 
because palmitic acid has 16 carbon atoms arachidonic acid has 16 no it doesn't have 16 it has 20 so they all are wrong option let me show you the details in the ncrt textbook so here are the details first of all lipids are water insoluble as we know they are uh, oil loving they are water uh, hating that is why insolubility is there and they could be simple fatty acid a fatty acid definition is it will have a carboxylic acid group including the r group rcoh where r could be anything between 1 carbon to 19 carbon including the carboxylic acid carbon so total up to 19 they are such carboxylic acids are called fatty acids now you can see here they are clearly mentioning palmitic acid has 16 carbon but in the option it's given 20 which is wrong fatty acid could be saturated also and unsaturated also in the option they have mentioned just the unsaturated so that is why it is also a wrong option then you can see another simple lipid this all is trihydroxypropane so they have clearly mentioned the name which is actually a true moreover you can see they have given some lipids are phosphorus and phosphorylated organic compounds in them and they are oxolipids which are found in cell membrane so the second and third option was correct so two statements were total correct and moreover you can see they have mentioned some tissues especially the neural tissue have lipids with more complex structure which you don't have to discuss here so now let's see the next question identify the basic amino acid from the following so first of all what are basic amino acids so understand this is the general structure of any amino acid which contains a carboxylic acid group which contains a amine group okay it also has a hydrogen and it has a residue remember in every amino acid this residue residue keeps changing and remaining all these three are fixed so you can see when amino acid when uh, alpha amino acid when it has one amine group and one carboxylic acid group so when amine group is equal to a carboxylic acid group then it's called neutral amino acid it is neutral okay but when NH2 group let's assume the R is something which has an NH2 group then what happens if NH2 group is more than carboxylic acid group then it's called basic and now you can think of acidic uh, acid so R will have such group along with C double OH so when C double OH group is more then it is called acidic amino acid so there is a very easy trick to remember all the basic amino acid it is light and heavy take a note of this we can use the term light and heavy where you can see the first alphabet l a h okay first initials so light represents lysine a represents arginine and h represent histidine histidine so by this you can easily call out all the basic amino acid so that is why lysine is our right answer but let me show you the details in the ncrt So here you can see they have mentioned that there are some names of, uh, you know, acetic amino acid like glutamic acid, aspartic acid is also there. They all have uh, the R group also contains CWH group and that is why CWH group is more in total than just one NH2 group. That is why they are acidic in basic amino acid. You have lysine. Lysine has a R which also has an H2. So that is why. 2NH2 is to 1 CWH. So overall, it's you know basic. And then you have some aromatic amino acid which has aromatic rings like tyrosine, phenylalanine, tryptophan. Okay. So now let's see the next question. So in the next question, they are asking you Ramachandran plot is used to confirm the structure of is it RNA protein, triacylglyceride, or DNA? So that is you. I'm leaving you all to answer this question in the comment box below and do find the Ramachandran plot and about the you know very famous uh, scientist from India Ramachandran it's given in the NCRT you have to find it and answer the question keep following Chikri Science Academy for more such videos and do share with your friends who may need it bye bye for now